What is Thank your you. reaction to Elon Musk taking a 9% stake in one of your competitors, certainly, Twitter? Well, you know, I think it's uh, very interesting because, you know, the goal that President Trump has and, and my, what I have in our team here at True Social is to open the Internet back up so that the American people can get their voice back. So it's clear that Twitter is kind of a ghost town. Uh, they desperately need Elon Musk to be there. So, you know, it's probably something that Elon wants to do. I think he probably believes in free speech like we do. Uh, but at the same time, you know, there's not very much activity over at Twitter right now, especially when you compare it to sites like ours where we're just in our beginning stages as we continue to test and bring people on day by day. Uh, our interactions are already beating Twitter. And so Elon's going to have a lot of work to do there. Uh, but, you know, we want everybody. We, you know, we see True Social as something like a rising tide that lifts all boats. We want people to get their voice back. And at, at True Social, we're, we're doing that and it's working. And look, Maria, you're probably the best uh, uh, test case that we have. Uh, as of this morning, you now have more followers on True Social than you do on Instagram. And I follow you on Instagram, yeah. and you're very active on Instagram. You have a great, uh, you put yeah. up great uh, uh, content there. So how is it possible when we're barely in our nascent stages, just barely beginning, and you already have more yeah. followers on Truth than you have on Instagram? I want you to answer the critics because one of them is with me today, Devin, and that is Lou Bassanese, who was on the show uh, a couple of weeks ago when I asked him about Truth Social. And Lou, you said it's dead on arrival is what you said. Yeah. You want to jump in here and ask Devin a question? Yeah, no, I would love to. And look, no, disclaim this. This is no disrespect. Wall Street is way different than K Street, right? So this is about me as a fundamental analyst. There are things that line up more to be short your stock than long your stock. Uh, and, and I think part of that, like I would love to see the interaction, but I've been waiting six weeks and I've only gone down 30,000 people on the wait list. Here's my key question. In tech, you have to move fast, break things and build it, right? You guys are moving slow. There's no visibility on when it's gonna get built. My question to you is this, if Elon Musk lets President Trump back on Twitter, what, what is the reason for Trump, uh, for True Social at that point? Because he has 88 million followers there and maybe a handful of million that can't even engage right now. Um, there's a bigger audience there. There's a platform with a libertarian in the lead. It could be a, a way to engage a lot more followers quickly. So would President Trump go back on Twitter if allowed? And at that point, what do you do with the business that you're trying to build? Yeah, so, so a few things there. Um, you know, first of all, uh, like I said earlier, uh, the fact that you know Twitter is a house of cards and, and a ghost town, and our product is much more. Sir, there's more, 217 uh, does million much view, more, users much more there, than, than It's just not Twitter. a ghost town. There's 217 uh, well, look, million users. No, I think. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, hold on according hold on, to them, ahead, I think. Yeah, once you get rid of the bots and the trolls, you really have, have a house of cards. It's impossible. Okay, where everybody who has a Twitter account and everybody who has a truth account. We're barely beginning, yet all of the people who have a truth account and are on there have more engagement, more followers in, in many cases than what they have on Twitter. So uh, the fact is, is that, you know, we're we're happy for Twitter. I mean, look, it's if, if Elon Musk can fix it over there, that's great. Uh, but the fact is, is that, you know, we are going, you know, we are testing as we go. We continue to get better every single day. Uh, and look, the numbers don't, the numbers don't lie. The fact is, is that our community continues to grow and flourish. And I think that's going to continue uh, just as we continue to let more and more people on the platform. I just want to make sure that I heard this correctly. So Twitter is a ghost town with its 217 million daily active users, and yet Truth Social, which Devin Nunes left Congress to be the CEO of, with all of its 500,000 daily active users, is a thriving online community. If there was ever any doubt the extent to which these people will gaslight you to your face, look no further than Devin Nunes trying to convince you that 500,000 is bigger than 217 million. I'd say Congress lost an important voice when he left, but Congress didn't. And by the way, it's not just the fact that Truth Social has some dwindling faction of user base, but just days ago, the company's chiefs of technology and product development both resigned. Add that to the fact that Truth Social has plummeted to the 28th most popular social media platform in the App Store, and I think you'll start to realize that maybe Devin Nunes is painting just a mildly rosier picture than what reality shows, which in his defense is 
pretty par for the course for Devin Nunes. I mean, let's be honest here, even Donald Trump hasn't posted on his own site. And look, I'm no tech expert beyond spending far too much of my day scrolling Twitter, but if you create your own app that's supposed to upend the entire tech industry only to watch it sputter out with just a few hundred thousand users, and the guy who created it won't even post on it? Then I don't know, maybe we all just admit the obvious and recognize the fact that this isn't exactly what we'd consider a successful launch. I do want to touch on one part of what Devin Nunes said to Maria Bartiroma while gaslighting her into thinking that Truth Social had already overtaken Instagram. And he pointed to the fact that she's already got more followers on Truth than on Instagram. Now, first of all, Color me shocked that a network predicated solely on fealty to Donald Trump is delivering one of his most loyal mouthpieces followers. Who would have guessed? If Donald Trump's toilet bowl had an account on Truth Social, that would probably do pretty well on the site too. That's not a measure of how strong the site is, it's a measure of how sycophantic his followers are. And second of all, Nunes says that her high following on Truth Social over Instagram is in spite of her incredible content on Instagram. So I checked and uh, here's that content. The majority of her most recent posts are of geese. So yeah, I don't know, maybe just do less of that. In all honesty though, I will say that one way Republicans have been effective in this space is equating the idea of getting kicked off of certain tech platforms for failing to follow terms of service with being censored. Now so that we're clear, when someone gets kicked off of a tech platform, it's not a violation of the First Amendment. Why? Because First Amendment violations apply to the government. Twitter is not the government. What Twitter is, is a private company. And private companies are allowed to lay out rules that we all agree to follow if we want to use that service. So if Republicans want to spread disinformation on the platform or otherwise violate those terms of service, then guess what? Twitter has every right to enforce its own terms. And to hear these Republicans, from the purported party of personal responsibility, whine because they think that they're entitled to do whatever they want and suffer no consequences, really does give the whole game away here. They're not pro-free speech or anti-censorship or whatever other BS labels they want to dole out to make themselves feel better. They are anti-responsibility. There is a difference. So I have every bit of certainty that Devin Nunes will continue to try and gaslight anyone with a pulse into thinking that his failing website is somehow changing the world of social media, but it's not. And at this point, it looks like the only person Devin Nunes is fooling is Devin Nunes. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.